next topic this week, we are going to be talking about Age of Ultron. Uh, about what three weeks now before it hits cinemas. Yay! I'm still going to watch it on release date, hopefully. Well, actually, yeah. Speak as recording because we're on a Friday. Uh, three weeks today, and it goes worldwide. And actually, two weeks it will be available in the UK because we get it a week before the Americans. Yeah, it's about time we got some. We've got out. time. We got some early. Um, so yeah, seeing as it's only a few weeks away now, uh, let's have a, a little chin wag about what's going to be. Well, not what's going to be, but who's going to be in the film. Our thoughts on the trailers that we've watched, etc. Okay. Um, one of the things that I'll kind of point out is I've read Age of Ultron graphic novel. It's um, was actually given to me one of, by my best mate for my birthday um, because the film was coming out. He says, "I have a read of this." And you yeah, have a very nice friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Scott. He's a brilliant guy. Um, so can I be Scott's the... friend too? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Scott. I want to be your friend. You have a no, Scott a for friend a friend. <laughs> Um, he does want to join us on the podcast a couple times as well. So, um, but based on the graph novel, it's not going to be. Any, well, there may be some bits of it similar, but I doubt it because one of the main characters or two main characters in Age of Ultron, the graphic novel, is Ant Man and Wolverine. So that kind of debunks the graphic novel for the most part. Do you think that would be so be cool though it? if they turned up. It would be. Um, it would be really interesting for the cinematic universe to receive uh, Hugh Jackman in the film. <laughs> Hugh Jackman is another very, super. very hot guy. <laughs> is, is that another one of your favourite superheroes? Yes. Another guy who wears spandex. She likes metal oh, no. claws. She wants to get scratched. No! We're not, we're not going down this route. This is yeah, we're getting a little bit off of it. <laughs> back, back to the actual uh, stuff that's been shown, the um, individual sort of scene credit credits that they've done, uh, where they sort of split out, they call up the name, and then they show a like, sort of 10, 10 second uh, stint of each of the characters. Looks absolutely brilliant. You've got this, um, the majority of cast, there's, looks like there's only three new people joining, um, which are Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, and The Vision. Um, what are your thoughts on Paul Bettany's costume for The Vision? I love oh, it. Oh, I, I think it looks fantastic. fantastic. Here's a question. Do you think in the film the vision will be Jarvis put into an android body? I don't know. I think, though, they might try and stick to the uh, lore of the character where it's um, Ultron that creates the vision. Well, no, because Iron Man is building him with Hulk. Uh, but that's um, Ultron that they create, isn't it? No, it's the vision. They built both the Ultron and vision. Yeah, the, build, the Ultron yeah. program is what Dowie Jr. Yeah, Iron Man or yeah. Tony Stark, whatever you want to call him. He he admits to making the Ultron program within the trailer. Yeah. So therefore yeah, he that. Yeah, he, he made as far as we're aware, he made the Ultron program. So whether it is him and uh, Banner that are working on vision, I don't know. I wouldn't like to see Jarvis put into there because I think Jarvis is his own entity and I, I like Jarvis the way it is. And after, I'll be honest, I watched one episode of Agent, uh, Agent Carter the other week and I couldn't get into it, but after seeing someone portray Jarvis, and I think the actor um, did a great job of portraying him as a human, was mm. just, that was, that was brilliant. Yeah. Well, there's um, plenty of incarnations of Jarvis being a human in the comics. Edwin Jarvis. So that said, I can't, I, I, I don't think he will be in Vision, I, I think Vision is his own character and his own entity. And yeah. I think that that's the way they want to keep him. That's why I think we... it's going to be created by Ultron rather I'll than Tony be... um, Stark. I'll be honest, I'm not watching anything on Avengers at the moment because I want the surprise when I go see it in the cinema. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's one of the few things I will not spoil for myself. Like, because I love the Avengers and I do, I'm not watching anything on it. Because I want to go to the cinema, watch it, and be like, oh my god, that was amazing. Oh, I'll still be like that, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, but like, cause, Well, because I've read spoilers on everything. Like, I've read Arrow spoilers and stuff, and it's like, you know, this is something I don't want to spoil for myself. i just like to see the kind of avenue that they're um, taking with it on, like, um, you are on, for those that have seen the trailers, what do you feel the difference is between... Quicksilver in the Marvel Cinematic Universe compared to Quicksilver in the Fox Universe. The Quicksilver in the Fox Universe is a badass, from what we've seen in Days of Future Past, anyway. And what? So what? What would you consider um, Quicksilver in this one? 
I don't know. He seems very serious to me from the trailers. I, I, I don't really see him having as much fun as he did in Fox. But that might be just because we haven't seen much of him in uh, Marvel's version of him. Yeah, I think I think you make a valid point there. I think it is quite hard to suggest what yeah. his character is going to be like from the trailer. But I would have to differ with you there, Dan, because I think he's still he's got cockiness. He's yeah, definitely true. got cockiness. I mean, in the trailer, well, one one of his only lines in the trailer is, "Oh, what's the matter? Too fast." You know what I mean? He's yeah. he's still got the cockiness. That I think I think they'll portray him well. And I mean, I, I'm surprised they're like allowed character. to have him, to be honest. But it's because the split rates. For uh, those two characters, I, I had a picture on Facebook. It kind of shows they put um, the production rights in Split, um, and Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch have had the two, like the kind of crossover the two. Um, I can't remember what the reasoning was, but it was when the companies bought up the characters back in uh, the nineties. That's why we've got such a split, and why Marvel are trying to get them back. So I think I think eventually Marvel will get all the characters back, especially now they've got the deep pockets of Disney behind them. I, yeah. think, I think they will buy majority of the characters back. What I don't agree with, um, if I'm honest, is buying Ultimate Spider-Man back on and then still allowing... Um, is it Sony that do the, do yeah, the Spider-Man Sony. films? I don't agree with the fact that Sony will go on to now produce the spectacular Spider-Man films. Yeah, that's that's going to be another yeah, split, obviously, because they've got the Ultimate Spider-Man, and I would imagine they probably they probably have the majority of the Spider-Man bins, but left Sony with that one, so they continue their the side of the story. But I, to me, I'm getting a little bit sick of seeing Spider-Man films that repeat the same damn thing all the time. Yeah, I, the origin, we've seen the origin too many times. Give us something fresh. Yeah, if you they're going to see Miles Morales. Yeah, see, I, oh I yeah, I'd like to see that. Actually, I'd quite like to see Miles come into it. Um, and I think I actually read an article not long ago about it, and um, if I can find it, actually, I'll stick it on the on the Facebook group. Basically, it was it was explaining how a lot of characters now portrayed in films are of different origins to what they are in the comics. In, for example, obviously, like in in that case, there was talks about Spider Man becoming a Black Peter Parker. Yeah. But in the comics, Miles is black. So why bring in a Black Peter Parker when you could do the Miles story? You know, that, yeah, that would make more sense. Well for them, it? Um, for, Sounds like, like they're just being awkward. But it's it's not that, mate. It's to do with the the openness of the casting. It's not yeah, to it's, show yeah, the, the that anyone casting. could get the part. Because if you turn around and say, okay, well, we're going to do this next Spider-Man film. I want a white male of um, an American or or ethnicity, ethnicity. I don't know. I got, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm tripping over my words tonight. So, <laughs> you know, basically, American background, um, and he has to be between the ages of 22 and 30. You know, that's going to cut down. I mean, a lot of companies do do that, but now they've started more going. Okay, well, we want to be between these ages that has this background. It doesn't about race or um, yeah. They're, they're yeah. looking at it. Can we get the best actor? Or look at what yeah. they're doing with yeah. the Human Torch. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. it's a very bold move. I've got to be honest, after seeing The Thing in that film, I think it's going to... F having The Thing portrayed by Billy Elliot is not the way he to look go. Like, he looks like a pile of... And by my language, he looks like a pile of s***. Well, he looks like rocks. He looks a lot better than how the first um, thing looked in the uh, incarnation that they did in 2004. <laughs> no, I'm going to have to disagree. I quite like the original thing. It, the thing was, like, the th thing's rocks and boulders that's all down together in the cartoon he was essentially jagged and yeah. the film that they brought out he looked like a putty man yeah so, I agree with that, that. this <laughs> kind of picture that they've got it looks like it's a collection of rocks that's uh, like, like pulled its stuff together and they're jarred out and things like that and it's not the best picture to have but it is only a teaser picture so we've not, we need to see it in action and how the body moves in comparison to just basing it on a picture. It's like me turning around and saying, well, what's your opinion on Quicksilver for Age of Ultron compared to... We were only getting this small yeah, snap. True, true, but I, 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 from the trailer, I, I can already tell you I'm not looking forward to the Fantastic Four reboot. It's not got me hyped as much as the Avengers or any of the other trailers, so I might have to give it a pass in the cinemas. I might pick it up when it comes out on Blu-ray, but I'm not really looking forward to that one. I, I'm looking forward to Fantastic Four. Oh. It looks I like know, a, it's... Not, not as much as Avengers, but I'm still looking forward to Fantastic Four. For the three superhero films that are out this year, um, Avengers number one, Ant Man number two, Fantastic Four number three. That's the kind of order that I've got them set. I think actually that's like the, the order of release. 
Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think so. I think so. I thought uh, Fantastic Four was before. Was it not? When's that man do out? Uh, June, isn't it? Or June or July? Yeah, the Fantastic Four's not due out until September, October time. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was the other bit. I think it's September, actually. I think it's September 17th, but don't quote me on that. I think it's I'm about September 17th. So, um, yeah, anyway. Looking going... forward to seeing Paul Rudd play Ant-Man. See, I don't know anything about Ant-Man. I'm I'm one of these people that if I don't know anything about them, I'll go on the internet and try and find out as much as I can about the character, their oratory and comic books, etc. Um, you know, right to the point where I'll even try and get hold of some of the comic books to have a read um, and before I obviously watch something. I mean, the, the two things I didn't do that with is Arrow and The Flash. The Flash I started reading afterwards, Arrow I haven't touched because apparently the TV series is quite a weak adaptation of is actually within the comics. It's It's... Yeah. It's not it's bad. It's very different. But it is, yeah, it's completely different in the same aspect. You know what I mean? So, whether th- there is the comic fanatics around the internet are saying that it is slowly starting to turn more towards Green Arrow, but, you know, it depends how they take it and where they go. Yeah, t- but to be fair, I think, like, no offense to the people who read comics religiously, but I think they can get a bit arsy when the TV series take a different turn. And yeah. you've got to appreciate the audience is different to comic book readers and those who watch TV series. Yeah. Like, with TV, you have to put like a lot more different stuff in it to get more audiences engaged, just like The Walking Dead. The comic books are different to the TV series. Yes, there's some crossovers, but it's different. Well, that's because you've got to keep people engaged into the TV series. Yeah, well, if you look at the actual TV series of The Walking Dead and the comics, the the characters that have actually been killed off are completely different. You know, I think if just to pull a two off the top of my head, um, Andrea's dead in the TV series, whereas she's alive in the comics. You know, just yeah, one of them. Well. Yeah, exactly. And um, there was a couple of twins that were in it. They were actually the they opposite sex. Yeah, they were the opposite sex. So... You know, th- there's been quite a few alterations. Like, for example, Daryl's not in any of the comics. That was an AMC character. Yeah. They created him. Yeah. And, stuff. And, and people love Daryl in that. And it's like, that's what TV's trying to do. It's trying to engage an audience. So, so I think the reason why they went to comics is thinking, like, who's what's going to draw the audience? Like, more people are going to relate with people on TV rather than comic books. Yeah. Like, yeah. In, in my opinion. I agree. Like, got, so the thing is, like, you've got comic book fans. You get a series of comics. And then they'll take a different avenue with it. Yeah. Look at what yeah. um, they've done with uh, the writings of Wolverine. You've got, we were just talking about it before the cast started, Wolverine has uh, got a death story now. That's yeah. uh, recently came about. But you've also got Old Man Logan. But the death of Wolverine is a young, I'm pretty sure when I've seen the artwork where it's a younger version of uh, Wolverine, it's not Old Man Logan. No, no it's not. No. So, if you've got that, how can you overall argue of a TV show having a different aspect again? Well, I think this all relates back to the Age of Ultron. Which, well, yeah. Agree. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, no, I'm this all relates back to Age of Ultron. Like Paul was saying, it, it seems to be different to what the comics are and what the film's going, going to be. Yeah. Without, like, without, what, what, what are you going to engage more with? That you might do. be down to the fact that they don't have all the characters. Yeah, no, oh, no, but, no, even, that, but minus, minus that, you know, you're getting you get a different people. aspect and it's going to be an interesting story because you can't turn around and go, oh, I know exactly what's happening. Exactly, so, yeah. If, if you stick to the yeah. original source, it doesn't give that mystery to pull in the crowds. You want that intrigued customer base. And you don't have that if you everything is 100% accurate. The Winter Soldier. You remember the whole Hydra infiltration thing? Was that drawn from comic books or was that invented? Um, I'm not entirely sure Soldier, I'm sure. Because it was uh, the Winter Soldier comic book was a case of uh, throughout time there was uh, assassinations happening and it was this Winter Soldier that was happening. Um, and Steve had to essentially go and find who this was. Though I can't remember if there was any espionage in it. Hell Hydra. <laughs> <gasps> Hunt her down and throw her in the ditch. Oh, well, let's be honest, Hydra own half the world in the comic books now. So, you know, well, not the comic books, but the uh, the cinematic universe. Um, yeah. Hydra now own the world. So, you know, we, we don't really stand much of a chance. Um, yeah, you're better saying Hail Hydra and being undercover. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, yeah. I love Hydra. They are my favourite bad guys. 
it's a good concept of a bad guy. It is. It's very good. It's not one person. It's, uh, it take, you get hugs from people going, Hey, Hydra. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but if that's the case, you should all be in a loony bin. If you're walking around <laughs> hugging people going, Hey, Hydra. <laughs> you should be put in the nearest loony bin. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do think, like, with all these superhero stuff coming out, I do think it forms, forms a bond with, like, like, all these nerds, like, like Comic-Con, and, like, you know, all those who like, like that sort of stuff, it just, like, forms a bond, which you didn't get. Right, on that note, I think we're going to wrap up that one. Right, final subject this week, we are going to be talking about Black Ops 3. Now, it's been in the headlines of practically every gaming news website and YouTuber who, actually, up until the point where the announcement trailer was released, um were going it's been confirmed it's been confirmed you know they'd seen like one little picture somewhere now i believe that um it's been quite a mass media market involving snapchat as well and it was all bought back bought about sorry um after a recent update to black ops 2 now this is going to be sort of a, a debate here because call of duty is always there's always that battle between call of duty versus battlefield and we don't really want to go down that line but we're going to give our opinions on what we would like to see, what we wouldn't like to see, whether we're happy that they're doing a Black Ops 3 or whether we'd like to have seen a different storyline, etc. So mm-hmm. my, I, I'll, I'll start this one because I haven't really started anything. I've passed it around this week. Um, personally, I'd have preferred to have seen a World at War 2 because I, I really, really enjoy the World War games. And I think it's about time one of the companies that went back to their roots. It's been a very long time coming and having a decent world war ii game um obviously i played wolfenstein which is a complete you know sort of off the off the trail of world war ii you know it, it's sort of afterwards and if the nazis won but it's quite similar in the same aspect um but i think it's about time call of duty went back to its roots now uh, what do you guys think and don't all shout at once you know actually i'm going to nominate uh dan go first well i actually made a video on my own personal youtube channel a few months ago um, arguing that I really did want World of War 2 to come back because, well, it's been, like, what, 10 years since we got Call, uh, that, uh, Call of Duty during World War 2? And, um, basically, I think that it would have been, it would have given them the edge they needed to push the sales this year because, let's face it, Call of Duty sales are, are, are really have been going down in the past few years. But I'm still really happy with Black Ops 3 because, well, I think I love Treyarch because, well, Treyarch's Call of Duties have always been my favourite since World of War right up to Black Ops 2, and Black Ops 2 is actually my favourite Call of Duty of all time. Um, I'm happy to see Zombies return, I'm happy to see that they're going to be continuing the storyline, and I can't wait to see what they do with it. Right, that's fair enough. Uh, now, I, I, I have to agree with you, actually, because Treyarch have always been my favourite Call of Duty um, developers though as i said i'd rather have seen the world at war and just to point out as well not to undermine you here but it's been eight years since oh. seeing world war Two version <laughs> the only reason i know that is because when i went to buy it i actually got id'd it was a 15 i was 17 at the time <laughs> i got id'd to buy it yeah that's how bad it was and that was back Woolworths was on the high street that, oh, that's yeah, where i went Woolworths. to buy it from Bloody i went in there i picked it up i put it on the counter and have you got any ID, please? And I'm like, I'm 17. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, there you go. How time was flies. That? Was that World at War? Yeah, that was World at War. And, my, uh, my... So, yeah. Anyway, carry on. Uh, my opinion is, like, the world, like, I'm a, a massive Medal of Honor fan, and I have been, and I'm absolutely gutted EA cut, cut Medal of Honor, because Medal of Honor, I think, was the best war game out there, and I think the story of Medal of Honor was far superior than Call of Duty. But I am a Call of Duty fan. I have been since Call of Duty 2 was the first time I played. And, yeah, I'm excited about Black Ops 3. But uh, the most unpopular opinion ever, I'd rather have a ghost too. I absolutely love the ghost. <laughs> I know. But I absolutely love the ghost storyline. I, like, I don't play multiplayer. I play for story. And I think the ghost story was more interesting than Black Ops. Yes, Black Ops was interesting. But I think I prefer Ghosts over it, and that's my opinion. But I am looking forward to a new COD, even though it's released every single year. I still love COD, because I like my first-person shooters. <laughs> See, I think I think that a couple of people there actually touched on a valid point. And um, storyline-wise, I definitely think 
and, and this is slightly going off the Call of Duty side of it, I think Battlefield always has better storylines than COD. And I agree that Medal of Honor always has a better story. Though, I was very, very pleased to see the way they integrated World at War to Black Ops 1. That was that was oh, very, yeah. very good. And I enjoyed the way that they involved Black Ops 1 into Black Ops 2. Though I have to be honest, if I... If I'm talking about my favourite two that go together, it has to be World at War and Black Ops 1. I thought the Black Ops 2 campaign was very good, but it probably wasn't my favourite. If I'm going to go for favourite campaign, it has to be World at War. I think with Call of Duty, my favourite campaign would have to be COD 3. Whoa, that's that's a very strange choice. I've never heard anyone pick COD 3. I know, but it's like everyone who's hyped up about COD 4. Yes, COD 4 was like brilliant, Modern Warfare was mm. brilliant, but like. The, the, what really, really got me COD was COD 3 on the PlayStation I have to, 2. I, I sat and played um, COD 3 as well. That was my first COD that I played. Um, but I, I'm just going to skip out on my comments until I was done. <laughs> Feel free, mate. Carry on. Take it away. Yeah, carry on. I'm not a fan of COD. Um, <laughs> I play COD games. I do. Um, I, I've played most of them. But it's just... I don't know whether or not it's uh, just a case of the war aspects. Um, I prefer prefer my space shooters. I'm a Halo fan um, and Titanfall fan. Um, but COD, I think it's just it's slow. Um, it's a slow game. It's and I'm noticing that if you get you you spend 40, 40 quid, fifty quid, sixty quid on these games, and you're getting a four or five hour storyline. I want a bit That's longer. Me. I don't. <laughs> yeah, I've never bought one of the uh, limited edition cods. Um, I just don't think it's worth the money. I do. Personally. I got the night vision goggles from Modern Warfare Two. I've got to be I honest. I like limited edition because it's shiny. Yeah, I, I bought the um, the Atlas edition of the newest so one, Advanced Warfare, but I did buy that at Christmas. So I rented it out at first, and I said to myself, "This is the thing I do with COD from now on." I decided that this year because I rent a lot of games. At, to me, I'll rent a card. If I like it and I play it, I'll buy it at Christmas. If I don't, then mm. it, it'll go back, you know. But this yeah, year, but, yeah. I was I was like, you know, actually, I'm really enjoying this Call of Duty. As I said, actually, before the podcast, um, I bought the season pass and haven't played it. I, I played the first lot. There's the Exo Zombies they bought in, and I don't need one more achievement on that. I haven't touched the, the card since, you know, probably five, six days after the first map pack came out, partly because they don't introduce hardcore playlists with the map pack only variants which really annoys me because i'm a hardcore player i hate core it's just full of bullet sponges and people that don't die yeah so you know <laughs> that's that's one of my reasons um but yeah i did buy the atlas edition and that, that has to be the first uh special edition i've bought of a game since i bought the edition of gears of war 3 and i tell you what, i was oh, on holiday actually that when that well. came out i was on holiday when i came out I came back to this red slit through the door from the Royal Mail. It was like, it's at your local post office to be collected. And I walked down there, and I was walking down with the missus. And we got in there, and the woman behind the counter goes, can you tell me what's in it? I went, yeah, Gears of War 3 Epic Edition. And they both they both just laughed at each other, and this woman behind the counter. She's like, you really know what's in it, don't you? I was like, yeah, I want it now. <laughs> sort of thing. But, you know, I don't, I don't generally tend to buy, buy the um, special editions or collector's editions, mainly because of money, if I'm honest. Like I said, I rent most of my games because I don't see the point in forking out for games that either I'm only going to ever play once or just won't like after I've put it in. You know, that's a great thing about renting, and which I thank Microsoft for not putting the digital rights management they were originally going to put in place. Yeah. Um, Screw you, um, what's, in it? what's his name? The guy that went to Zynga. Do you know what? That would have been a lot better if you knew his name. Well, <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> I, I, that's I, a bit I can be opposite to you, Luke. I just go straight away by the collector's edition. See, I've got, I've got I, a mate I like that. I don't, I can't, I can't afford it, but I do it. It's like, oh, this is a good game. I'm gonna get the collector's edition. That's it. And I regret, I do regret that on some games. Yeah. But it's like the the way, like I'm so desperate to get like collector's editions of certain games, but I'm ordering Halo Five from America, like the super duper edition. I've spoke to game and they said they've not got they've only got the standard edition just now. But they are will be getting some form of limited editions uh, later on. I can't hear it's you. Sorry, be... sorry, Paul. I can't hear you over that. I spent 175 pounds on Halo Five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll probably game. still be the same price. Just to put that out there. Game, I, I game, game. I, 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 I hate game due to Mass Effect Three collector's edition cock up. 
Mm. <laughs> I, absolutely. Him. And the only reason why I went, the last time I went to game was because they're the only ones who had a limited edition of Halo Master Chief Collection. That's the only reason why I went back to game. I uh, see. I continually go to game, and game turned around last um, was it last June, and handed me a hundred pounds worth of shares. Oh yeah, yeah I remember all of that. So I, I'll, I'll, I'm put my hands up. I'm a game fan. <laughs> But that's I'm a game star fan. Or black. Well, I always suppose it was in black mail. I didn't hold Amazon. it to the counter saying, You will take our shares, or you will never shop <laughs> again. You know, but. And then I, I sold my shares and got three fees, so I was quite happy. <laughs> Technically, you could have got three games anyway with the shares. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, no, not a game price. You're probably talking more like one and a half. Yeah. You know, but... Does anyone have the Batmobile version of Arkham Knight uh, pre ordered? Because I do. No. I haven't bought Alcon Knight. I'm not interested in buying it. Batman is not like superhero like. Boo! I, I really enjoy the Batman games. I think they're very good. But I think we're getting slightly off off topic here. Let's try and sort of yes. loop it back into Black Ops. Um, otherwise, the the COD fanboys have already switched off by now. Um, I'll edit that bit out later. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah. going back in relation to Call of Duty. Well, can I can I complain with COD right here? And I. I don't mean to offend anyone when I say it, but most fake gamer girls are like, oh my god, COD. And I don't mean to offend anyone, I'm not saying all gamer girls are fake, but most of them are like, oh my god, COD, thinking they're going to fit in with the gaming industry. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, there's more than COD. <laughs> games. Like, you know, I've got a very wide range of video games. I've been banned from some by the other half due to throwing my controller across the room. But it's like, <laughs> I love COD, but then I'll play like other games like Minecraft. Uh, I tell you what, if you and put is... if you put a controller in front of my miss and put Gears of War on, you're a loser. We we used to play Horde on Gears of War too, and she used to get really annoyed when people nicked her kills. I mean, oh. really, really annoyed. She's like she's like me. She she learnt it off me. No, my... no, my other half. I was playing um what what was I playing? Mortal Kombat, and I was like two against one. And I started swearing at my ex. I was like, this is cheating. And I threw my controller again across the room. And uh, he turned my Xbox and goes, you're banned from playing those games. I did that with a Rubik's Cube once because it wouldn't go back to being all colours on one side. So I threw it against the room, <laughs> threw it against the wall and put it back together. It worked. It took a bit longer than like yeah. 50 seconds. Some people can do blindfold. I, got, I get really rage with video games. I'm not a rage quitter. I just swear a lot. Yeah, and, um, but that, the, 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 main the, why, the main reason why I don't play online um, is because <laughs> you mean it's, online, not online. Is is simply down to campus. They're in every and, game. Yeah, but no, I, not time for. No, not time for. But I think it kind of ruins the sense, like when playing online, like having campers around. I understand in like large maps with snipe, like where is expect, but on a small map, campers, I think it completely ruins it. And also, I think Call of Duty multiplayer is unbalanced in a lot yeah. of ways. Yeah, like, agreed. With me, I can't get online all the time, so I'm not going to get to like level 60 that quickly. And I think the way the weapons are deployed is very, very unbalanced until you get to advanced warfare, where it seems a lot more fair. Yeah, I think I felt it's with advanced Black Ops War 2 was fair. No, I think with advanced warfare, I think they actually give you the better guns around the mid, you know, midpoint of your prestige. So around about the 30 mark, they give you start giving you the better guns. And then there's a few guns higher up, which are better. I mean, if I'm honest, the worst one for it is um, Modern Warfare 2, where they put the AK at 60, or was it 64? Oh. What, what was the top oh, rank? Yeah. Was it 70 on that game? Whatever it was, whatever the top rank was, it was that long ago, I can't remember, but whatever the top rank was, that is when you unlock the AK. Now, I don't believe in unlocking a gun on your last level of the prestige. And I, to be honest... I would quite like to see a system a bit like Black Ops 2 where you can buy the guns. You know, you start off, at what level you are, you can buy it. Yeah. That's what I'd like to see because I think that would work. It's just sort of going along the Counter-Strike route of it, you know what I mean? But I think that would make COD a better game. So you can you can well, buy it, which is what I like about um, Battlefield Hardline. That's quite similar in the fact that you, you, you buy your gun and you buy the upgrades yeah. and that sort of jazz. So, you know, I think that that sort of way would be a good way to go with Call of Duty rather than like, okay, here's your pistol. Or you're going to use that until you hit level 20. And when you hit level 25, we'll give you a proper gun because then you've grown. <laughs> Why are you talking in a Brazilian accent? You sound like, like a farmer. Oh, yeah, I, 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 my, my you sound like me when I'm... 
built. But I've seriously, though, I think thing. I think that's why I was these developer types speak. You know, they, they're not quite <laughs> like, all there. So, like, okay, Russell. well, you know, I I think that you can racist. have this done for now. That's not racist. I'll have you know. Um, that's not a proper job when you're talking to a bristle, bristle person. <laughs> a bristle person. Bristle. Bristle. So, bristle. Hey, bristle. bristle. <laughs> if you're a bristle, it's bristle. <laughs> so what what he does, you see, how he does this, you know. But seriously, um, that's that's the sort of, yeah, that's the sort of thing I think that they should be to it. Uh, going back to the serious note is the fact that you should yep. be able to unlock the guns as and when, whether that be on a token basis. You know, you'd say for example, to make it so that you've got to earn the guns slightly, you could always do a token system where, for example, said gun costs you five tokens. You earn a token per level, or by doing X amount of challenges. That would work quite well, you know. I wanted to go what? back to I the um, days of Duke Nukem 3D, where you had all the guns, mayhem, just a lot of fun. I want to go back to Golden Eye 64. Prefer... That's never going to happen. Oh yes. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's that's why I prefer co-op in every single multi game. I always prefer co-op because you're working together. Yeah. And you know you haven't got the gun disadvantage. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, um, I'm quite looking forward to Rainbow Six Siege when that comes out. Because oh, that, they, they've announced there's going to be no single player campaign. It's all going to be co-op or multiplayer online, which will be fun. Are uh, you in the alpha for? Th I'm. I've applied. Um, I haven't pre-ordered the game because, as I said earlier, I rent a lot of games, and that'll be a rental for me, and see if I like it, and then I might buy it at Christmas. Um, but. And I'm going to see if Luke likes it before I buy it. So you know, <laughs> if, you, if you want me to when I get it, I'll, I'll Twitch stream it for a minute so you can get the gist of what's happening. But thank, thank you. Um, I'll put my in the in the description list as well, just in case people ever want to watch me. I don't do it very often, but if people want me to do it, let me know and let me know a game. And if I've got it, I'll do it. Um, but just I really don't fiber. <laughs> yeah, you're not fiber. <laughs> no, I, I live in the sticks of Scotland, so <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, if ever you know. They want a bit of Twitch streaming or whatever, or you know, it'd be nice to all get together and do like a. We could always do like a let's play together through Twitch at some point. Yeah, that would be yeah. quite fun. Um, or a charity stream. Yeah, or a charity stream. Anything. I mean, obviously, let's let's. They're, they're sort of ideas as we grow, and obviously, if people listen to this, if you think that would be a good idea, or you'd like to see something along those lines, then please comment below, like us on Facebook, let us know on there. Um, all the links will be below, so you know, just just read the description. Not many people do anymore, so that's why I don't tend to put many words in it. But all the links <laughs> should be <laughs> um, Anyway, yeah, back to Black Ops again because we keep getting sidetracked. Um, does anyone else have anything to add to what no. they think they what? Right, okay. we need Lego Call of Duty. Oh, Lego, Lego <laughs> Dimensions. <laughs> Lego who's Dimensions seen, looks who's seen amazing. Lego Dimensions? That just looks awesome. I will put a link to That's a website neat. in the description, and I will also put it up on Facebook page later of all the play sets and party sets they're bringing out for it that have been announced. I want to say it's Marty yeah, that's that's the playset that they're gonna do. That's yeah, the one. back to the future. Yeah, you get the hoverboard and the DeLorean. Um, they've also got for any uh, Wizard of Oz fans that's coming to it. There's uh, Lord of the Rings that's going into it. Then you've got the DC characters like the. Uh, there's quite a few sets coming out. That yeah, Batman. Really, really um, then Follow is it in Jago? In Jago. The Lego brick row. Yeah, Lego's coming into yeah, it as well. Jago's coming into Follow it. There's also Lego brick row. You're Dan, shut up. Some serious editing now. You've been singing Dan. Oh, it's not that bad. <laughs> yes, it is. Right. I sang in front of 15,000 people, I'll have you know. That doesn't mean you're good. <laughs> no, that just means you've got balls. <laughs> I got balls of steel. So, thanks for listening to episode three of the Geeks and Gamers podcast. And if you're a returning uh, member, well, listener, should I say, then for, thank, we, you. thank you for your support. And, uh, you know, we hope that you've enjoyed this week's episode. And, yes, we have got sidetracked, as we always do, but it makes it more fun. And we never know what we're going to say until the day, so what the hell. And uh, as a final footnote to it, I would like to put in that we are currently on Facebook and Twitter also. Uh, the link for Facebook will be down in the description. Um, or you can always just go to Facebook and type in Geeks and Gamers. We've got the exact same picture and cover photo, so you should be able to find us pretty easily. And also on Twitter, which is G and G underscore podcast. Well, should I say at G and G underscore? Because I use Twitter a lot, can't I? Um, yeah. But yeah, on that note, I'd like to say goodbye. Uh, thanks for coming and listening to us yabber on about absolutely nothing and staying completely off topic, <laughs> as always. So uh, it's a goodbye <laughs> from me. And uh, again, I'll let you guys sign yourself out. Oh, that's been an interesting uh, evening tonight. We've got a lot of comic book stuff in as well, which uh, proved I'm a bit more of a geek than I thought I was. 
Uh, but thanks for watching. I'm going to go eat my Chinese now, so have a good night. Hasta la vista, amigos. <laughs>